and welcome back to the Quake Pro League and chat. I hope you're ready for this belter. It's going to be Sib versus Chain. Chain, you know, in terms of his recent performance, he's had some very tough competitors to come up against, you know, losing that, uh, I think it's to the Hang 2 1, I believe. Lost 3 0 to Rafa, but some of those maps were close, to be fair to him, and losing to Zanaku 3 0 as well. So it's now time for Chain to, you could say, turn things around a little bit. Yeah, indeed. Let's hope that he can uh, make some moves happen. Indeed, his last game was a loss against Saigip. Once more, a very close game. And so far, Chain is a player who at the beginning of this season rather really seemed like he was competing for top two, top three NA. But that has kind of leveled off a bit and he just hasn't been able to live up to the hype and the expectations that I think a lot of people had for him. So far, he's only won one series this stage and lost four. But today he is going up against Sip, a man who currently is, I believe, one for six. He's beaten effortless, but other than that, has not been able to secure a series victory. However, he did manage to get quite a few map wins here and there, so he did accrue quite a few points and earnings already. Yeah, Sub's had a little bit of a tough time here and there, don't get me wrong. And I think what you said about Chain is true. Like, he hasn't been getting worse or anything like that since back uh, when, when he actually did perform really, really well, especially against Rafa and the Hang previously, quite a long time ago. But I just feel like the rest of the, you know, America's players have actually made a lot of improvements to their gameplay. And he's kind of either stayed the same or just got that like, little bit better. But we've seen some flair from him, especially in last week's matchup against Rafa, where he kept a couple of maps close and the third map kind of yeah. went way too in favor of Rafa, but look forward to see how Chen can do here against Sib, as Sib has a lot of work to do. Now, I think that um, predictions are going to show that Chain is probably the fan favorite to win this one. However, if you look at their recent match history, they played in the stage two finals and it was actually Sip who took down Chain. Oh, okay. Sip managed to qualify for the Quake Pro League after beating Dewey in a clean 3-0 manner. And after that, he actually had a pretty decent run taking down Chain. So this could absolutely go in favor of the American, but on the other hand chain is a player that you can never count out and that i'm really hoping is now putting more time and effort into practice as we're getting closer to the finals again yeah a lot more preparation research everything else in between to make sure to try and keep up with the rest of the pack i will say that chain has got a lot better in terms of the last few weeks i know the results against his opponents don't show it but you've got to remember the, the opponents he actually had the last three opponents he actually played against you know to rafa went to hang before them as an arcu straight after that as well you know it was a couple of three zeros and two ones but you know the hard bunch are out the way now now he can focus on trying to collect all these w's leading up towards the end of this stage. It's been a pretty tough ride for him so far, but at least he knows exactly what he needs to rectify in order to, you know, to be as good as he would like to be leading up to the finals. Indeed. Now, I think that a lot of this series, as usual, is going to come down to the picks and bans, which we should be able to take a look at soon. That will allow us to have a more informed decision when it comes to these predictions. So it looks like we are going to start out on Exile, which will be Sip's choice, and we are immediately starting off with a massive disparity in champion stack. Sip will be running the Sorlag, a heavy champion, going up against Chain, who's playing Athena. And now Athena is definitely not a mainstay when it comes to Exile. Map 2, Battle of the Heavies, Brawl of the Big Body Boys. It is going to be Scalebearer taking on Keel. I think Keel for a while was really considered S tier, top tier pick on this map. Scale better a little bit less so, but nevertheless a very capable champion for this arena. And then finally, Ruins of Sarnet once again. Sip going for a heavy champion. The Clutch, this is, I think, one of the only games that I can remember, if not the only one, where one player just went heavy champion across the board. Sorlak, Scale, Clutch, that is not something you see every day. And Clutch is also a champion that's rarely played in the Quake Pro League because of how risky he is to run. So this should be an interesting one, Lethal. I must say though, these map bans have been perfect for Chain. Statistically, Sib's best maps have been Corrupt to Keep. It has been Molten Falls as well. There is two go-to maps in this best of five, but it looks like it will not be happening at all. Just due to the fact that for Sib, you know, it's going to be kicking himself thinking, well, you know, I ain't got these two maps to me. But then again, he's got ruins to kind of fall back on 
if he sees fit. But yeah, Chain has been very lucky in terms of being able to get away with banning Molten Falls as well. Maybe Sif's not comfortable with it anymore. I'm not really too sure. He decided to select Exile straight away instead. Maybe he's got something up his sleeve which he wants to try and do against Chain. But it's just a little bit shame that he doesn't get to keep all Molten Falls. But for Chain, though, he's going to be very, very happy with his map picks. Even having the kill on Deep Embrace as well as being able to select it is going to be very, very important from him. And Sib, seeing the clutch come out, we'll have to see how Chain can deal with that, though. But this is going to be a really aggressive approach, especially on this first map on Exile. I think the big unknown here is Athena on Exile. Athena, in theory, right, she works well on a map like this. There is a lot of slippery surfaces, a lot of dangerous drops, and a lot of nice areas where you can make good use of that grapple hook to traverse very quickly important areas of the map. You can get straight up to the mega health, you can take away the rail and immediately zip right back out of the room but on the other hand it seems more like a theoretical pick for the time being and it's not something that i've really seen work in practice very often so chain this might be you know the ace up his sleeve something that he's been practicing theorizing a bit in secret so it's very interesting to see what exactly he'll be able to make happen now in practice as well yeah, Sib has whipped out the clutch a few times as in the on the odd occasion i think we've seen him once or twice bring it out on the woken but hasn't really worked out too well for him but on runes it definitely can it just depends on how much he wants to be aggressive how much he wants to try and excel in terms of contesting these items so it's gonna be you know a bit of a game plan for Chainer to decide exactly what he wants to do with the Galena he needs to make sure he keeps on his toes keep his totems as unpredictable in terms of positioning as possible but at the same time he needs to keep his yeah. distance and try and bait out that shield that's one of gonna gonna be the most prioritized things for chain in order to lead into that third and final map but we'll see what happens in these first two as we're going to start off on exile between right. sib and chain as now we're going to start off from sib's pov sib getting the heavy spawn and just look at that stack difference chain being a light champion appears in the arena with no armor to work with whereas sib is pretty much maxed out right now pretty slow opening from sib very calculated knowing very well that his opponent wants to get a hold of that lg and so he just sits on it lying in wait and now chain is caught in a very bad and risky position can he escape can he get out oh for the moment he can somehow he escapes but this should be the moment where sip catches him out and he's now actually in a situation to take away the mega while chain picks up the heavy and this is already a quick 2-0 for the american player who now has to be careful really weak his opponent doesn't have a railgun yet but still, Sip has to be cautious because Chain can very quickly flip control now. Absolutely. Sib with a dream start here. Just trying to keep his distance from Chain. Doesn't matter to hit that rail, but sadly for him, he needs to back away. But Chain does get the heavy though. Sib hits that first rail from that jump pad, misses the seconds, but. Chain's going to be pretty happy about that, but Sib's going to be happier with that rocket, and Chain responds with a beautiful close-range rail, just to try and keep this as competitive as possible. Still early days as of yet, it's only been 90 seconds, and Chain just waiting for Sib to make that first initial mistake. Finds it, managed to get that first rail once again. Will he be able to corner him into the... Oh, he actually did, but sadly he did fall after that gravel hook. But look at the stack Chain has at the moment. He's going to go straight in for him. And, oh, I was going to say, Sib knew that he was in deep trouble. Just wanted to try and make as much damage inflicted as possible onto him before he was taken down. But so far, so good. Chain has managed to claw this comeback. The rocket did hit, but only 15 damage. Does finish him up with her again. A beautiful rail, picked up the Mega as well, and now Chain is up 3-2. to two. And that is why Athena can be so dangerous on this map. Unfortunately, the Super Shotgun was slightly more dangerous, but being able to use that Grapple Hook to such great effect allows you to instantly traverse the map, make it over from Mega all the way to Heavy pretty much instantly. But Sip was ready, he was prepared, he had the Super Shotgun in hand. But now is just caught out in a really bad position with nothing to really defend himself with. And no player getting consistent control going just yet. Now Chain 
does manage to pick up a railgun, this might catch Sib by surprise because he caught a railgun that was dropped on the floor rather than having to go all the way over to the rail side of the map. Now, he did it anyways to get himself some more ammo. But that could have been surprising to Sip if he was keeping track of that. Now, I like what Chain is doing here. Just taking a bit more of a defensive response to this next item cycle and setting up trying to do good damage. And that's exactly what he does. Nice rail as well. This is an opportunity for the Canadian. He might be able to get a frag here, but can't overextend. Because it's a slow killer, right? The toxicity, the poison, before you know it, you've lost a significant amount of stack. And stack is something that you don't have ample of when you're playing a small champion like Athena. Chain just trying to bait out the first oh. movement from Sib. Nice way to finish things off for Chain. Been able to regain this lead. Waited to see if he dropped down into the rail, but it looks like it's not going to happen. This chain just biding his time at the moment. Does realise he has dropped down there to the rail a little bit, a little bit late there, but does manage to hit it anyway. He's going to be trying to get the flank on, but just again, just baiting it out once more to force Siv to go for that light armor there. But does go out on top. Oh, he was trying to stay alive there, but he just could not. He was trying to regain control. It's just not going to happen. Chaino just, again, just buying his time. Nice to sit on these top rockets and get these rail angles. We've seen him do it the third time in a row. It's got two for three there in terms of rails. Misses the fourth one. Does hit that one, though, and could give him a bit of time to maybe even drop down. But that was a beautiful rocket. A great way to respond. We'll catch him on the spawn as well. But at the same time, Sib does manage to pick up that LG. So he can't really take that fight as he has to back away. But again, though, Good way to extend Chain's lead here. Just Sib needs to be a little bit cautious on where Chain is going to be positioned. He seems to be hiding, not hiding really, but just holding that position around the top rockets to get these rail angles, and he hits them every single time. Chain's his read. Look at this. His reads have been impeccable. I think that is the fourth rocket in a row that he just nailed on Sip coming out of the teleporter. He is so ready for his opponent. And now he gets a heavy to work with as well. Oh, Sib, that's sneaky. If Sib had the acid spit available there, that would have definitely been a beautiful frag for the American player. But Chain was able to stand tall and walk away with the frag. Certainly did indeed. Sib though has map control, but is behind by five frags. Has four minutes to try and collect his thoughts and try and make this happen. But again, Chain on top rockets with these rail angles, just hitting him every single time. And Sib knows this, he just can't really do anything about it. He's trying to make something happen every time he goes back onto those top rockets, but again, just can't do much about it. Chain left on 50 HP, and Sib just can't clean him up here. But Sib does pick up the light from down below. You can see if he can get a different flank around. But once again, though, what is Sib going to do? A lot of time's been wasted thanks to chain shenanigans. As he's trying to back away, keeps him a little bit back with the LG. He can use that tri to find if he can feel himself any info, but instead hits the rails. So let's be real, that's a lot better than he was expecting. Has found out from the tri has gone straight through to that telly. Just doing great damage across the board, even with the bigger stack. Chain has playstyle right now the strategy that he's taken is basically perfect for this situation right he knows that he's faster than his opponent so what does he do he doesn't take that on one-to-one -one fights against he just leaves the room because he knows that he can't compete with that stack so instead he just keeps positioning himself in these places where he gets nice angles and where he gets good opportunities to mainly do railgun damage and the hooks are a very important part of that strategy he just zips out of the room sets up with a nice angle expecting sip to come around the corner punishes it with a rail just like that and then he just leaves picks up a few resources rinse and repeat over and over again and even though Sib is now the one who's securing most of the items Chain always has that escape route at the ready and is doing enough damage to make sure that Sib never gets comfortable completely and just can't start out stacking him and overrunning him into the ground so this is really clever from Chain and I really don't see what Sib can still do to counter it the routes that Chain is taking as well, it's just remarkable. It's 
waiting to see where Sib is going to be coming from. We'll find him. I think the main point is that if Chain wasn't hitting these rails, of course, Sib will just dive in with that mobility and be able to clean up anything that needs to be done. Good direct there. You were talking about the rocket damage from Chain earlier on. It looks like the trend continues, and that's going to be... You know, at least he burnt the heavy there, but at the same time, he took a rocket to the face. It's going to try and gauntlet him. A bit risky. But yeah, I think it was just um, basically about ever so slightly fair. Still got a minute and a half left on the clock. It's almost said and done here, depending on what Sib can do here. We're trying to clean him up with the gauntlet. He had two opportunities, did not happen. Sib has brought it back slightly, though. Four frags behind is doable. But the way Chain is playing, it's going to be very, very tough. Rails are going to be key, and it looks like Sip is finally starting to land some of those. Doesn't matter how fast you're going, a railgun is always faster. A hitscan weapon, there's no running from that. So if Sip can start landing these shots and actually do consistent damage with the rail from a distance, he absolutely has a shot of still bringing this back. Two frags, one minute. Definitely possible. <gasps> <laughs> That's basically a one-shot kill. Just... Your opponent has no armor, you know it, you rush them off spawn. The point blank does so much, that's more than a rocket to the face. Now Chain is in full damage control. All he has to do is stay alive for 35 seconds. But he's up against a mobile, fast and angry Sorlak. Yeah, Siv is really feeling himself now. Out of his last few frags, we did say he can definitely get four or five... In the next minute and a half, 20 seconds left though. Sib is trying to find him, does manage to find him. Will he be able to clean him up here? Does have to stack advantage, but it's just a matter of where he wants to go. He's leaving the heavy on purpose for obvious reasons. Now he's gonna have to try and TP free, but will he find him? Change this in, he's will gonna find him. He does take him down. This is gonna go to sudden death. But you gotta remember though, Sib did leave that heavy, which means that Chain was able to pick it up on the heavy spawn. But he finds him once again, will he be able to clean him up? As Sib is so, so weak, he has to try and get away. I'm not sure if Chain is available. No, he's not, but he will be straight after that one. Both players super, super weak. Who's gonna come out on top? As already, it's been 20 seconds in this sudden death. Both players have just been extremely <laughs> cautious. <laughs> with his next engagement, but will Sib be able to get it after having to claw back from this fort frag deficit? Picks up the heavy, the mega is up, and look at this, Chain hasn't actually picked it up yet. And if Sib picks it up, it could be a massive difference, but it doesn't matter. Chain has already managed to pick up that mega. And now we're going to see what these two players are going to do now as Sib. Just trying to keep some element of control. Good first round from Chain, two for two for Chain, again from that top rocket position. Good railing overall. So Chain just manages to squeeze it out and get that first map win. A hard fought win it was though. Chain definitely getting pushed, especially in those final few minutes. There was a point where I said, well, what, what can Sib do against the way that Chain is playing like now? And well, the answer was the railgun. Doesn't matter how fast your opponent is. She's got very little stack to work with. Two rails and she's done for. One shot and she basically has to scrawl on the map for resources because she is so terribly weak. And it is only when Sib finally started to just consistently land those railgun shots that he started making a comeback happen. And he damn near did as well. So that was pretty damn solid. Now it was Chain ultimately who secured the win. But that was a very rare sight when it comes to the Quake Pro League. Both players, Lethal, were at like, what, 20 points of health for half a minute, nearly, after yeah. that one engagement yeah. at the end? It's, there were almost no resources available because they had burned them all up in the previous fight. And so both were just kind of awkwardly waiting on their side, like, <laughs> okay, okay, is Heavy gonna spawn? Is Mega gonna spawn? That's not something you see every day, but it were the rails in the end that favored Chain, and he got himself that first map win. Look at the item control from Sib though. 26 items to the 14 of Chain. But look at the map present. Yeah. So you can see there, 1811 damage more. He was doing such a huge amount of work. 63% rail as well and 43% LG to boot. 
remarkable stuff once again from Chain. It was, uh, took a lot of work, it took a lot out of him. I bet he regrets, you know, having to try and gauntlet Sib back on top rockets. But speaking of top rockets, we sent, mentioned it a few times as well. Just holding that position, just holding that angle and just hit it every single time as soon as he knew that Sib had that stack advantage. So great thought out plans there from Chain. We'll have to see if it continues on on the second map. Map 2, I imagine, is going to be very different. In this first map, Chain entered with a very clear game plan. Get a lead, and then once I have the lead, I am just going to go for the angles. Try to use the railgun to get that leg up over my opponent. I can give him full map control, he can take all the items. I know I'm faster, I know I can cut him off. If I read him correctly, I will keep punishing him, and he won't be able to catch up with me. That was basically Chain's game plan going into map 1. Now map 2, we've got a much smaller map. You're up against the scale bearer who is more mobile than you are, and you are Arkeel, a big body slow champion, you really can't play the same way. There's not going to be that many, you know, sneaky plays, waiting for position, trying to get a rail here and there. I'm expecting this to be much more of a brawl. Well, I hope so, because that one definitely was, and I'm sure the trend will continue. Even with the kill, I think Chain is actually the one who selected the kill. So we're going to see how he approaches that heavy, because it will give him that slight advantage with the pineapples. As long as he gets there early, that's going to be the main thing. All about that item preparation. So we are going to go into map number two. Chain currently up 1-0 in the series. But we'll start from Sib's POV here as the second map will get underway on Deep Embrace. As you can see already, Sib picking up that heavy. Does find Chain trying to shoot a few of those rockets through the stairs. Doesn't get him, but just showing his map presence there as he's going to try and back away once more. But realizes that Chain is directly above him. Good. Hit from that last rocket. It's going to be going Tommy to see if he can get any more work done. But that rails from chain two for two there. It's not going to help him at all in the slightest as he needs to try and back away. Pretty reserved start up until that moment. Now both players low and that will result in a trade. Chain lands the rail but Sip fired a rocket off from above. Oh, he's getting hurt bad now, Sip. Down to 20 points of health. Chain, that was such a tremendous read. Chain, his awareness has been absolutely perfect so far. He always seems to be aware of where his opponent is at. And it's helping him out tremendously with those railgun shots. Now Sip does a good amount of damage there. Chain not quite connecting with the rail and heavy machine gun, of course, is much more consistent damage, but it will still be the Canadian who gets that two point lead. Oh, look at the discipline from Chain. He knew he couldn't be anywhere else, no matter how much Sib delayed it. But to be fair, Sib delayed it by quite a few seconds, at least four or five seconds before approaching the rail. But Chain just knew there's nowhere else he could be. He didn't hear any audio, audio cues going to bottom mid or anything like that. So that was great prediction there from Chain once more. We'll be picking up the heavy mechs coming up in the next 20 seconds. The items are heavily segregated here, which means that Chain could continue as he sees fit to keep this full map control. And Naz finally pick up that rail as well. So we can be looking to try and force Sib out of that top mid area, but Sib does get the first rail off. So not really going to be helping him much here as he does absorb another rail. It isn't available as of yet, but Sib's trying to think what position he could take in order to order to contest this heavy but chain does manage to get away does manage to get those two health bubbles he was looking to get the mega but sib managed to stop him in his tracks i think he just realized as well that he spawned on the shotgun but had to prioritize the heavy of course for obvious reasons but did have the lg out going to switch to the rockets taking a fair amount of damage chain is going to try and get the top mid if he can going towards that heavy good rail there once again from sib but he's looking to try and get behind him in the tp just pretending to bait him out but Chain's already got away and looks like he will be picking up the heavy as Chain was looking to go for the Mega. Not too sure if he is at the moment. No he's bottom mids at the moment just trying to see where Chain could be but does find him as both will be going for each other's items. Chain has been extremely conservative when it comes to the grenade usage. That is something that's been standing out to me. He really only rarely shoots them when he's right up close to his opponent and even then he fires maybe one, sometimes two, but other than that he's really not trying to go for any sort of, you know, denial or tactical plays when it comes to the grenades. Now he is still one frag in the lead. I don't know if he's just holding on to them 
up until he really needs them the most, that is something that quite clearly stands out. Good rocket jump from Chain right there. If he hadn't gone for the rocket jump, he could have been in pretty serious trouble because Sib was right behind him and he would have to, you know, take a few steps back to go for that tricky jump up to heavy. And if he had messed that up or if Sib had gotten to him before he could pull it off, Sib probably would have gotten the frag as well as full control of the both major items. So that was a really strategic rocket jump. Yeah, you take a little bit of self damage, but it can prevent so much wrong. Heavy's now up. Mega will be up in the next few seconds as well. Change is trying to see exactly where we could be. He's going to be pushing him straight through towards the light, but Sib will be coming out on top in that engagement and does tie the scoreline. Gets the first initial rail on spawn. Picks up the Mega as well. Managed to regain top mid control as well. But he's hitting his rails beautifully there. Going two for two straight afterwards, as well as the rail he got earlier on on spawn. Which means that Sib is back in the lead. Heavy up in the next couple of seconds. You saw their changes trying to use a couple of those pineapples to squeeze in towards the heavy. Doesn't manage to be too successful, but caught with his trousers down with the LG. That was huge for Chain to take Sib out there. And now ties things up once again. Picking up the Mega. We'll be going towards that light. And now you can see Chain wanted to try and get to that heavy positioning before Sib does as he's now going to rocket jump up towards it. Great rocket there, 66, as Sib has to back away once again. The game is all tied up, but Chain has a real opportunity here to get control. Although I think that that rail might have stopped his efforts. That was a very important shot for Sib to hit. Still connects with the bull rush, but Sib, I think he gave up positioning a bit too easily right there. Perhaps he wasn't aware of how just how close Chain was, or how aggressive he would push in for the item, but Seb just really maneuvered himself all the way back to DLG and then set off the bull rush from way back there. And that allowed this opponent to essentially just jump onto the Mega and do a whole lot of damage before Sib got anywhere near him. And that has given Chain some momentum. He's now two frags up, and there's 15 seconds between the items. This is a crucial stage for Sip. If he cannot throw a wrench into the wheel right now, then Chain could set up something, some level of control, some consistency that could carry him over until the end of this map. Chain finds the first rail. Oh, that's a nice amount of damage there from Chain. Didn't really take a huge amount himself, and he had the light to cover his backside straight afterwards. Sip had to drop down straight away. That was an awful spawn for him, sadly. Nice rocket there. Nice rocket again from Chain. Sib was questioning whether to just go for that Mega or not, but by then it was just too little too late. Chain's picked up as well just to make manners worse for Sib. And Sib now just stuck on that rocket spawn. Beautiful LG once again from Chain. Now this is where things are starting to get a little bit out of control. This Chain still needs to recover even after picking up that heavy. Looking to maybe drop down that murder hole and be able to get a few more health orbs but looks like he's going to get that first rail onto Sid before he does that just wait and see what he's actually going to do good first rocket good second rocket and great oh. direct to clean <laughs> up Sib again just great stuff from Jane that's the problem right when you try to chase someone through the murder hole there's just so little room to maneuver that you basically have to pray that those rockets don't connect but this time those prayers went unanswered and chain hit him full to the face and now with a six frag lead this is going to be extremely difficult for sip to reverse because even if he does get chain on the ropes that's a lot of stack that you have to chew through before you can get a frag and you can't forget chain has got those grenades the pineapples to work with even off spawn he is not going to be a free frag he is going to make a stand and he's going to force you to work for it and you are likely going to take a fair bit of damage just by virtue of those grenades alone i do love the early preparation of the timings for the heavy nice rocket jump there from chain oh good direct there hits the rail as well he's so so close to taking him down that's a 40 hp chain if he got away with that that would have just been ridiculous yeah it's now safe still needs to trap well still needs to catch up by five frags got a minute and a half to do it in 
Managed to regain top mid control, dropping in with the LG. Look and see if he can chase Chain down, but Chain manages to hold his ground. Trying to get away from him ASAP. And still vote. Oh, he caught, caught down again. As he was dropping out from top mid. I think he was trying to play it clever. And he did the right play, don't get me wrong, but Sib smelt that off perfectly. Minute 10 left for Man. He's still got four frags to go. A little bit of a replica of what we saw in that first map. But I think it might be a little bit different. Oh, the rocket actually went through the woodwork. Oh, he's going to be kicking himself a little bit. I'm not too sure how much damage that would have done. Maybe not a huge amount, but nevertheless, every little bit of damage is good damage here. Because he's done a lot of damage with the LG there as Chain was trying to get the cross. Sip has got the stack advantage here, but he needs to go for this because it's just too little too late. 45 seconds left. Chain five frags ahead. That's going to be pretty much said and done here, Flea. As Sib trying his best to claw back, but it's just nowhere near enough. So far, there's been two things that have really impressed me on Chain's ends. One is his aim, especially the LG on this map has been absolutely solid, sticking to his opponent like glue at times, 45% LG, but he's been using it a hell of a lot as well as 46% rail. But the second thing that also really stands out is just the map awareness. Chain seems to have this radar for where Sip might be at and he is so consistent at setting up those early rails or just outplaying Sip by out strategizing him really and just knowing where his opponent is going to appear and then get that initial opening damage leaving Sip to basically play catch up from the very first moment of the encounter so Chain's map awareness is really a thing to behold right now. I will say that Sib had a really good first half. You can see from his rail accuracy as well and everything in between. He didn't have as much item control, don't get me wrong, but he was able to do a lot better with it. It did a lot more damage dealt onto Chain. The difference with Chain is the fact that during the second half, he had a lot more earlier preparation for the heavy, which he didn't beforehand. And that's what you need to try and do with the kill. And of course, the discipline on Spawn was again just ridiculous from chain so chain again didn't make sure is well he did make sure but it wasn't going to be a replica of that first map as as you remember rightly but Siv clawed his way back in that first map but the second map no a completely different story this changes did a great job suffocating Sib on spawn and yeah we're talking about those three rockets going into the murder hole you're pretty much asking to get taken down there and that two for two rail with the pineapple at the end was a not, you could say added a little bit of style there. Just looking at the damage count so far, just under 600 damage, 596 to be precise. And just looking at the rails as well, 58% rails from Sib, 49% all chain. It's a little bit of a shame really, because Sib has had you know some really good starts in a lot of his matchups, but chain is just adapting every single time. Now map number three. Let's see if Sip still has an opportunity to at least secure himself one map win. The series has already been decided in favor of Chain with those two initial wins. But now the final map is also bound to be an interesting one because uh, it's rather the clutch is going to be played once again. And that is a champion that we very rarely see. You sometimes, I mean, it's, it's a stable pick for Razy over on the European side of things. Then you also have seen Wenger play him every so often. Yeah. But in the Americas, it's really just Sib who's been pit picking him recently, even though it's the Hang who popularized him years ago, back in 2018. Sib now seems to be one of the only American players who's really going for the robot consistently. Yeah, I was just trying to think from the top of my head who else could have played Clutch in the Americas region. I think you're right, though. It just seems like when you think Clutch in the Americas, you do think Sib because... He's very rarely used him on occasions as well. Maybe once on Awoken, if I'm here from the top of my head. It always seems to be Ruins or Awoken anyway when I do see Sib play with the Clutch. So we'll see if it can make any kind of difference here against Chains Galena. And from what we've seen so far, Sib has put on a good performance nonetheless, even though Chain has come out on top in that second map. But you can see it looked like he was a little bit tilted on some of the occasions, especially what you saw with those three rockets going down the murder hole. That's somewhere you do not want to put yourself in in the Silas. But yeah, he could come back from this third map, but Chain has just got to remember the fact that keep those totems under control, try and bait out the shield whenever you can, and just keep your distance until you know there's a good chance to plan out that attack execution and then be able to kill him up straight afterwards so chain has to have a lot of patience a lot of discipline coming into this and we've seen an element of that on that deep embrace game especially on spawn so what can chain do here can he get that three zero in this matchup or will sib be able to claw a map back we'll have to see we don't really see clutch often in the america's region but normally it is sib 
who brings it up here. So Chano, we, we started from his POV to see what he's going to be up to. Delayed the Mega ever so slightly, enough to contest both these items if he he would like to. But at the moment, though, Chain has to try and back away if he can. And, and look at that, he baited that shield, and this could be a time for Chain to kind of make something happen, but he's already taken way too much damage here, as Sib gets a very clean frag to start this match off. Indeed, a quick frag going in Sib's favor already. Can he make it back to Mega on time? He should be able to with a rocket jump, but I think he did hear Chain and decides against such a rash course of action. Now, this is not an easy matchup for Chain whatsoever. There's a few champion picks that are considered to be somewhat effective counters against the clutch, right? Ranger, for example, because you can orb away or orb through the shield to a good amount of damage. Athena, because you can lure the clutch down somewhere and then get straight back up. Or BJ, the dual LG, kind of counters a lot of that shield. But Galena is not really one of those typical picks. She doesn't have anything to really use mid-fight. So Chain is going to be heavily reliant on trying to set up and hide those totems around the map, getting that overstack and just being in an overall better shape when taking these fights. Oh my goodness, that drive by Ray over. Second in the second frag for Chain. Chain just going straight on in. Good LG. Good two for two. Real. Will he make it three for three? Yes, he will. A huge amount of pressure here from Chain. Was trying to get a little bit cheeky there. You can see Flea just to see if he can get that extra one before dropping down that heavy jump pad. But it doesn't matter. The damage has already been done. Two minutes of play. Chain already up three one in terms of scoreline. Sip just standing still at the moment, just trying to see if he can. I will see how disciplined Chain is, but Chain just sitting there waiting so patiently. More patience for the Saint there, and you know what? That was well done there from Chain. He could have been anywhere at that point, but you saw there, he was just being very well disciplined. Once again, a good example of that being when Sid was waiting for Chain to look away whilst he's going for that rail on Deep Embrace. But Sid's probably thinking, what else can I do here? Nice direct, almost got the combo. Both players are available, but Sib charges on in from the tripod side and does finish off Chain getting that second frag for himself. Chain had 81% railgun accuracy up until that last fight, and that just shows that Clutch is a very strong champion to play, but it's also one that has quite a few weaknesses to deal with as well. And of course, the main weakness is the size of his hitbox. He's a barn door basically impossible to miss in some situations and that is why Sip is prioritizing those hourglasses so much he's constantly trying to get a hold of them to get his shield up as fast as possible because the moment he doesn't have that shield ability available just look at what happens with his stack he meets chain over at rail and barely drops a frag just like that so Sip really has to make the speed the dodge work in his favor while also trying to secure as many hourglasses as possible and to really just make himself scarce on the map up until he's confident in his stack and his ability to take another fight. Good first rocket, but it's not going to be enough. This chain does take him down heavy. It's going to be up in the next couple of seconds. Chain is hunting to go for light armor. Still vote. Chain looking to see if he can get that flank on. The shield will be up, but... Oh, he just managed to get away. Chaino tries to rail him from above, but he's got the exact position of where, sorry, positioning of where Sib is going to go. But Sib has gone to the courtyard. But for how long? For if he stays there any longer, Chain could easily trap him. But it doesn't matter. Sib has managed to get away, going behind that staircase. Good two for two. He's looking for the third, but Sib is not going to overstay his welcome there, which is perfectly understandable. As Chain still got a huge amount of stack to work with. Realises that he was going to spawn in that courtyard area. He's going to see if he can try and flank around. Doesn't manage to, but doesn't matter. As Chain looking to pick up this next Mega. He's just hitting every single one of his rails. Almost went free for free again. BC Sib does manage to get away. But he's trapped in the courtyard though. Which means he's probably going to get taken down by Sib. Yes, he does. Now up 7 to 3. It's one of the biggest risks of ruins. Both of the smaller armors are just so open and exposed that making a run for them is always a risk because you are opening yourself up to so much potential damage. 
Usually, that's primarily a problem for the light champions, but when you're out of control as a heavy with the hitbox the size of clutch, it's just as much of a problem for Sib right now. And Chain, as we discussed earlier, his map awareness is just absolutely through the roof right now. He constantly seems to know exactly where Sib is. And by doing so, look again, the rocket jumping straight up, forcing a spawn, catching him with a rail immediately, and now chasing him down, once again finding him at LG, the close combat rails, chain don't give a damn, he is just absolutely on fire right now, and Sib, when you can't use that ability at the time of your choosing to overwhelm your opponent, you're really just a fridge soaking up damage around the map hoping to survive long enough that you can use that ability he's trying to contest this mega he needs to make something happen but it's just not going to work out here four minutes left he's seven frags behind and just looking at the stats so far 62 percent rail from chain it definitely feels that way after 32 shots but the damage is a talking point here nearly a 2,000 damage difference between the two night and day differences chain is just continuing to make life hell for zip here as now mega's come up in the next couple of seconds chain's not going to go for it as of yet just double checking to make sure that and isn't any cheeky flanks coming from sib but sib is just trying to back away for dear life as chain is gonna be picking up this heavy as well just making matters worse for chain Sorry, making matters worse for Sib. So he's still got Phoenix 15 left on the clock, but it's going to be a real tough ride here for Sib, I feel. Chain has just got this iron grip on the items right now. He's running them in perfect succession. And Sib, yeah, eventually that kind of desperation forces him to make pushes like that. He knew when Mega was going to spawn. And he just had to go for it, or at least that's what he felt like. Now Sib is going to suicide right there. I actually quite like the decision to go for the suicide. Unfortunately for him, I feel like Sib waited a moment too long with that decision. Because the, the reasoning behind it is obvious, right? If yeah. you stay there and you wait until you're fracked, your opponent's already moved halfway back across the map and can secure heavy. But if you deliberately kill yourself in that situation, you can just quickly spawn on the other side and get to heavy, which Sib knew was up before your opponent can. Now, unfortunately for Sib, I don't think he was fast enough to go for such a uh, drastic action. And in turn, Chain was still able to take away the heavy and get another frag as well. Chain just continuing to hit these rails, but like I said, you know, it's the size of the barn door, so what do we expect? 61% rails now for Chain, and I just feel like Chain's just a huge stack for the entire time. Look at the item control, he's had 22 items to the 8 of Chain, minute 40 left. This Chain just continue to pick up these items as well. It's a shame for Sib, really, because he tried to do everything in his arsenal and his power to try and make this clutch work. And Chains has been baiting out that shield every single time, been constantly hitting his shots every single time as well. But Sib is uh, almost given up at this point. There's not really too much he can do with 9 frag deficit on a map like Ruins. Good try, though, nonetheless. Again, he had to, to start. You know, it wasn't a really a dream start for him, but at the same time... It, Definitely could have gone a lot better in his favour. But at this point now, a minute left. It's pretty much said and done as Sib will be losing this series 3 to 0. Clutch is probably the greatest high risk, high reward um, champion that's in the pool right now. If he works out, he can be basically impossible to stop. He can be the single most oppressive champion to play against. But that is so difficult to make happen. And I think that that is also the reason why the Hang, who is actually the first player to really bring Clutch into the pro scene, has now basically said, you know what? Clutch, yep, he has its uses, but he's just usually too risky. It's just not worth playing him because when it goes wrong, you're basically left clueless with nothing to do. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. Sip didn't have a perfect start, but it was a decent one. <laughs> Unfortunately for him, once you're caught out without consistent access to those hourglasses, you can't get your ability up in time. Your opponent is setting up those totems and is landing shots like a truck. I mean, Sip 
has 3,000 less damage than his opponent, which might just be the biggest disparity I feel I've seen in a long time. And that is just because Clutch is such an easy target to hit. And if you're not landing shots in return, that's going to be GG. Yeah, that was a huge amount of map presence. I kind of felt like Sib knew what was going to happen after the halfway stage. His chain was, was just not missing. Sometimes Sib did use the shield at the right time. And look at that. Some of the rails we saw from chain. Just what can you do against that? You know, it's just one of the circumstances that Sib put himself through again and again. But at least he tried to make the clutch work. You Like he said, it's high risk, high reward. And can only work against certain players. It did not work for Chain at all. But never mind though, as we'll see Sib once again in the Pro League. But look at that though. Look at the damage, like you rightly said. Just under 3,000 damage. Or just over 3,000 yeah. damage, actually, in comparison. 59%. Oh, dearie, dearie me. 47% accuracy with the LG as well. 59% accuracy for the rail. It was just a change here. Look at the damage he did with each of those weapons as well. 2,200 with the rail. You can't make this stuff up here, Flea. Indeed, you can't. I think the highest I saw was 81% for chain at one point when I checked with the railgun, <laughs> that is, which is absolutely obscene. Now still 59%, 47 with the LG. Those are the kind of numbers that you can expect to see against a clutch when he is out of control and he just can't get the movement or the options that he wants. So once again, we're going to finish on a 3-0 clean sweep. It seems to be the theme of today's games. I don't know, Lethal. We still have some two excellent featured war or featured matches coming up shortly, and I do think that these two are going to be much closer than what we've seen. What about you? Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any more free O's after this. Depends on the circumstances of these matchups. But guys, we do have two more matches left to come. The next one will be Base versus Avix. So make sure you guys don't go anywhere as we'll be back in just a few moments. <laughs> 